few highlights of the dedication of Christ the Savior Cathedral in Johnstown. The actual dedication of this new place of worship was held Sunday, May 30th, 1954. WJAC-TV has prepared this special report to bring its viewers picture coverage of a seldom seen event, the blessing of a mother church. Christ the Savior Cathedral will serve as a spiritual headquarters for some 100,000 members of the Orthodox Greek Catholic faith in the United States. Thousands thronged to the cathedral site in the west end of Johnstown to the ceremonies, which began early in the morning with this procession. This was followed by a pontifical divine liturgy, a dedicatory banquet, and a ball and a reception. Officiating was the most reverend Orestes P. Chornock of Bridgeport, Connecticut, bishop of the American Carpatho Russian Orthodox Greek Catholic Diocese. He was assisted by a corps of some 55 priests, including the Right Reverend Peter E. Malchaney of Homestead, Pennsylvania, the Vicar General, and the Very Reverend John Yorkison, Dean of the Cathedral and Diocese Chancellor. Now, here to describe this important event as it was filmed is the Reverend Stephen Sedor, pastor of Saints Peter and Paul's Church in Wimber. An event of great importance to the 100,000 members of the Orthodox Greek Catholic Church in America has just begun here in Johnstown. Ceremonies have started which will mark the solemn dedication and blessing of the newly constructed Christ the Savior Orthodox Greek Catholic Cathedral. The procession has left the grounds of the diocesan seminary and has approached the new half million dollar edifice of unique Byzantine design. At the procession marches the His Excellency, the Most Reverend Bishop Orestes P. Chornock of Bridgeport, Connecticut. He is preceded by the members of the diocesan clergy and the seminarians. The marshal of the procession is the Reverend Prefect Ivan Zmurat, assisted by members of the Christ the Savior Seminary. Bearing the processional cross is Seminarian George Hutnyan of Freeland, Pennsylvania. The choirs of St. George's Church in Taylor have been singing in the procession as well as choirs of St. Nicholas Church in Homestead and the choir of the Cathedral Parish here in Johnstown. The procession of church dignitaries has now formed for the consecration of the exterior of the structure. Deacons and subdeacons are uh, incensing the uh, pathway and they will incense the walls of the edifice with holy water. And Bishop Chornak will bring up the rear of the procession. The long train of the bishop it will soon be visible. It is called a mantia, an angelic vestment because of its long and flowing lines. He is preceded by the vicar general of the diocese, the right reverend Peter E. Molchani of Homestead, Pennsylvania. The deacons are now incensing the pathway and Bishop Chornock is ready to begin sprinkling the walls of the new structure. The choir is chanting the following hymn, O good one, 
who didst found thy church upon the rock of faith, direct thou aright our petitions therein, and accept thou the people who in faith cry unto thee, Save us, O our God, save us. Processions are frequently used in the Eastern Church. They remind the believers that they are, after all, sojourners and travelers in this world, and that with each passing day they journey closer to eternity. These processions, with the symbol of the cross at the head and with banners and flags, remind the faithful that they must be militant in the fight against sin and all evil. They must be willing to take a stand with Christ and to be soldiers in his cause. The walls of the new Christ the Savior Cathedral are being sprinkled now with holy water as the deacons and the hierarch, uh, the Bishop Chornock, are making their way around the structure. Thousands of people have gathered here to participate and to be witnesses of this unusual event. They are led by their bishop, Bishop Chornock of Bridgeport, a 70-year-old prelate who was consecrated bishop 15 years ago in Constantinople. The imposing Byzantine-style edifice located at Garfield Street and Butler Avenue has been built at a cost of more than a half million dollars. Contributions were made by people of the Orthodox Greek Catholic Diocese throughout the nation. These people today are not only celebrating the completion and dedication of their mother church and spiritual center, they are also observing the 15th anniversary of their founding and canonization by the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople. Christ the Savior Cathedral is a unique structure. Its design is a modern form of classic Byzantine architecture and it will serve to perpetuate in our land this form of edifice which traces its origin back some 1500 years. Byzantine ornamentation, mosaics, icons, stone and wood carvings, and religious symbols have all been embodied in the half million dollar structure. The exterior of the church, 130 feet long and 68 feet wide at the transept, is constructed of belden faced brick trimmed with limestone. Three domes, two at the front and the third, a large central dome over the sanctuary, are typical of its Byzantine or Eastern design. The towers are all treated with gold leaf and they represent the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The front of the building is particularly appealing. It has richly carved panels and colonnades. The Holy Trinity is symbolized in the portico carvings. There is a huge eye set in the triangle to represent God the Father, a crucifix depicting God the Son, and a dove to represent the Holy Spirit. These are intertwined with carved grapevine and wheat to symbolize the Holy Eucharist. The bishop and his attendants have come now to the front doors of the cathedral and here a special ceremony is taking place. The bishop is being greeted by Mr. Joseph W. Bukovetsky, president of the local congregation, who presents him with the traditional bread and salt. Nicholas Pollock, another officer of the local congregation, presents him with altar bread and wine, which will be used for the divine liturgy to follow and Stephen Brudnack offers the Book of Holy Gospels, which will be placed on the altar and then read during every divine liturgy. Michael Radaski, a diocesan trustee, will give the bishop a pair of scissors with which the ribbon and sign which seals the front doors shall be cut. They are now being cut by His Excellency and have been removed from the front doors. The very Reverend John Urchishan, the Cathedral Dean and Chancellor of the Diocese, uh, presents the Bishop with an altar hand cross and greets him as the pastor of the local congregation and as the Cathedral Dean. And finally, the Right Reverend Mitre Peter E. Molcheney of Homestead, the Vicar General, uh, presents the Bishop with keys to the Cathedral and the bishop has now opened the doors and is going in the first to enter 
the newly completed cathedral church. As entrance into the cathedral is being made by the church dignitaries and by the priests of the diocese, the choir joins into a joyous hymn. The crowd is now milling about the front portico doors of the cathedral. They have gathered here from New York to Chicago. Uh, faithful of the Orthodox Greek Catholic Diocese coming from the uh, many parishes throughout the eastern half of the of the country. They have come here uh, by car and bus and train and airplane to be here at this historic occasion for these people. Uh, many of them immigrants from the old country who came here in the latter part of the 19th century seeking freedom of worship and a chance to better their standard of living. Uh, they go into the church where the uh, interior of the edifice will be blessed uh, by His Excellency Bishop Chorna. The construction of this cathedral here in Johnstown uh, began in uh, 1951. The ground blessing was uh, performed October the 7th of that year and the cornerstone was laid October the 5th, 1952. And July the 4th of last year, the triple barred crosses, which are sim symbols of the Orthodox Greek Catholic faith of these people were solemnly blessed. And now these people have gathered here for the uh, climax to their prayers and their labor and their dreams, the uh, solemn blessing and dedication of their cathedral church. Uh, the structure becomes the mother church of the diocese, the spiritual center of the, of the diocese. Already located in Johnstown is Christ the Savior Seminary, where a number of young men are studying for the priesthood, and they will assume uh, pastorships throughout the eastern half of the country. The cathedral seats some thousand people, and they, the people are milling in now to obtain those seats. The choir law seats an additional several hundred, and uh, the crowd is milling now through the front particle and you can see the carvings and the faithful of the Orthodox Greek Catholic Diocese as they enter for the first time to participate in and to be witnesses of the Pontifical Divine Liturgy. The interior of Christ the Savior Cathedral has now been blessed. The bishop and his attendants have gone in procession about the church the subdeacons carried a special mixture of holy oils and spices which is called holy chrism. It is with this oil that the walls of the cathedral have been anointed. And candles are also borne and with these candles the sign of the cross was made over the anointed portions. The deacons incense the interior of the church. Sweet smelling incense keeps rising from the censers and are carried by the deacons. Incense is a symbol of divine grace which has been shed by Almighty God. It is also symbolic of prayer, which ought to rise majestically to the throne of God and be sweet in his hearing. Following the interior blessing, the clergy will begin to the divine liturgy. This is the Lord's service, the chief liturgical act of the church. Before it can begin, the ranking hierarch of the church is separated unto the exclusive worship of Almighty God. The building is to be used for no other purpose. In several respects, the ceremony alludes to the blessing of the magnificent temple by Solomon in the Old Testament. Blessings are performed for a very special reason. After the fall of man in the very beginning, God placed the curse upon the earth and all that it contains. That is why a temple of worship is blessed before being used as a house of prayer and a place where the word of God is read and preached 
and where the sacraments are dispensed. To one unaccustomed to an Orthodox Greek Catholic Church, the interior may seem a bit strange. The first object that strikes the eye of a stranger is a huge panel of pictures that reaches from the floor to the ceiling. This picture screen is called an iconostas, and it contains 50 painted icons. No statuary is permitted in the church in accordance with the second of God's Ten Commandments. An icon is a painted canvas portraying the Lord, some saint or some event in the life of Christ. The mere beauty is not the aim of the iconographer, rather he aims at portraying a spiritual entity. St. Paul speaks of a cloud of witnesses, and the iconostas, with its several score of figures, provides a visible record of the church triumphant and the church temporal joining in common worship. The iconostas is like an open book that unfolds before the believer. He may gaze upon the pictures and see portrayed the life of Christ. He sees the apostles, the prophets, and the evangelists, and the friends of the Lord. Atop the screen-like structure is a carved crucifix flanked by figures of the Virgin Mary and John, the beloved disciple. in all his Episcopal robes and now leaves the Episcopal throne and makes his way to the center of the cathedral. He bears in his hands two candlesticks. One of them contains three burning candles, a symbol of the Holy Trinity, and the other consists of two candles, symbolizing the human and divine natures of Jesus Christ. The choir sings a hymn in Greek in honor of the bishop. It is sung only at pontifical functions like this one here today in Johnstown. The bishop will raise these candlesticks in the form of a cross uh, and bless all four corners of the cathedral. has chanted the words of Psalm 80. O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see and visit this vineyard and perfect the same which thy right hand hath planted. Now the bishop faces the choir loft in the cathedral and repeats that same verse from Psalm 80. The choir responds with a verse in Greek, Ispola eti despota, a song of good wishes to the hierarch. After these blessings that the Divine Liturgy, the Lord's service, the service of Holy Communion, will begin.
the Divine Liturgy is about to begin. The first portion of it, the bishop sits on the throne. The deacon has begun and the vicar general pronounces the initial blessing. Directed by Mr. William G. Fairchuk, is singing the responses to the first portion of the liturgy. The liturgy, often referred to as the Mass, is an ancient liturgical act of worship. It portrays and reenacts the whole life of Christ and thus visualizes the redemption wrought by Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ. The congregation is singing an Easter hymn. We are still in the Paschal season in the Eastern Church. consultors and deans will assist him. They are the very Reverend Andrew Curtis of Clymer, the very Reverend Monsignor N.J. Wallace of Corning, the very Reverend Basil Kuritz of McKeesport, the very Reverend John Zelenyak of Taylor, the very Reverend John Rusin of Central City, the very Reverend Paul Cott of Sharon. The deacons are Reverend Stephen Dutko of Freeland and the Reverend Dean Michael Hannes of Elizabeth. liturgy. He is accompanied by the mitre bearer, the very Reverend Andrew Sapatowski of Bayonne, the crozier bearer, the Reverend Michael Sapaliga of Neskahoni, the Dikiran bearer, Reverend Peter Hotrovich of New York, and the Trikiran bearer, Reverend Peter Boletza of Monongahela City, Pennsylvania. The subdeacons are Reverend John Dolhe of Scranton, and the Reverend Elias Kozar of Yonkers. The ranking clergy in the sanctuary have now split into two processions and they are going around the altar in opposite directions. Meanwhile, the bishop is preparing to join the procession he will incense the entire sanctuary. The clergy of the diocese have come from before the Iconostas and are entering into the sanctuary also to take part in the procession. The bishop is using the censer and is incensing the altar. The 
masters of ceremonies in black cassocks are the Reverend Dr. Stephen Shutak of Phoenixville and the Reverend Edward Satbury of Akron, Ohio. The Vicar General, the Right Reverend Mitre Peter Mulchaney is now incensing along with Bishop Shorna. Congregation is singing the hymn, O come, let us adore and prostrate ourselves before Christ, O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us, who we'll sing to thee, hallelujah. This same hymn is being sung by the clergyman in the sanctuary. the vicar general of the diocese is preaching in English. He is pastor of one of the diocese's largest congregations and has held that post for some 24 years. Our General of the Diocese, the Right Reverend Peter E. Molchany of Homestead, is preaching in English. As the threat of liturgical worship is taken up again after the sermon, the deacons will begin by reciting several litanies, and the choir will make the responses. A more solemn moment in the Mass will begin with the singing of the Karabimic hymn. The Karabimic hymn, which is now to be sung by the choir of St. George's Church of Taylor, Pennsylvania, is one of the best-known hymns of the Christian Church. Such famed composers as Bortnansky and Tchaikovsky, Gerichaninov and rimsky korsakov have written music for these words. The hymn sounds an appeal to all the faithful in the Church to lay aside earthly cares and to raise their thoughts to the life-giving Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The words are, let us who mystically portray the cherubim
chant the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity, now lay aside all earthly care. anthem which is being sung a cappella as is all the music of the church the entrance takes place this is a highlight in dramatic liturgical art the ranking celebrants leave the main altar and retire to the side altar where the bread and wine for holy communion have been prepared when the procession starts for the main altar again a solemn intonation is made by the celebrants. The ranking hierarchs of the ecumenical church, the clergy, the monastic order, the founders, benefactors, and builders of the edifice, and all the present faithful are mentioned in this declaration.
choir then picks up the strain of its hymn once again, singing that we may exalt the King of all, who comes invisibly upheld by hosts of angels. Hallelujah. service is followed by another litany and then the Nicene Creed is chanted and the canon of the Mass begins. This is the most solemn part of the service in which the Holy Eucharist will be confected. The deacon has chanted, let us stand aright, let us stand with fear. Let us be attentive so that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. And the choir answers, a mercy of peace, a sacrifice of praise, as the faithful in Christ the Savior Cathedral come to the most solemn moment of the divine liturgy, the part of the consecration of the bread and wine, which in turn will be followed by the Holy Communion. Homestead, directed by Professor John Page, is now singing responses to the liturgy. him, holy, 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 Lord of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. blessing of the bread and wine in the liturgy is a reenactment of the Last Supper. The bishop takes bread into his hands, blesses it, and pronounces Christ's words of institution, take ye and eat, 
This is my body which is broken for you for the remission of sin. all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. for thee in behalf of all and for all. The choir will respond with the hymn, We sing to thee, we bless thee, we give thanks to thee, O Lord, and we pray to thee, our God. service of worship. Its setting in the ancient liturgy of the Eastern Church is just before the distribution of Holy Communion. The choir is singing it in the old Slavonic tongue. After the Lord's Prayer, the celebrant imparts a blessing with the words of the Lord, Peace be unto you all, and the choir responds, and unto thy spirit. And 
lead us not into temptation. the host and chant be attentive holy things are for the holy to partake of Holy Communion, the choir responds with the hymn, Only one is holy, and that one is the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is the glory of God the Father. Amen. Holy Communion in the Eastern Church is given under both forms, that is, the clergy and laity alike partake of the sacred host as well as of the chalice. The consultors and deans of the diocese are now receiving Holy Communion from the hand of the, of the bishop. After the clergy have communicated, the deacon will sound the invitation to the congregation to approach the Lord's Supper, saying, in the fear of God, with fear and love, come forward. Meanwhile, the choir sings communion hymns, depicting the love of God's Son and giving himself as the bread of life to feed yearning souls down through the ages. The choir now singing is that of St. Nicholas Church in Homestead, Pennsylvania, directed by John Paja.
Chancellor of the Diocese, the very Reverend John Yurchishan, has just approached the Lord's table. He is the Cathedral Dean. The diocese are now receiving the sacred blood from the chalice, which is being held by Bishop Charnock. In the background, the choir of St. Nicholas Church in Homestead is singing, and also the carillonic bells of the Christ the Savior Cathedral are being played. to a close. the ascension of the Lord. The liturgy portrays his life from his birth to his death and resurrection from the tomb as well as ascension into heaven. And now the celebrant is consuming the species as the choir renders a post-communion hymn. The hymn is an Easter anthem. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and to all in the tombs bestowing life. the Savior Orthodox Greek at the Cathedral in Johnstown has been solemnly dedicated and blessed. The Divine Liturgy has been served for the first time upon its altar. Prayers have been said and sacred hymns sung and the Word of God preached for the first time within its walls. Now the faithful of the Orthodox Greek Catholic Diocese are leaving the Cathedral edifice. They're being anointed with holy oil and the service of dedication is coming shortly to a close. departed from the cathedral and the clergy are making their exit. They have left the sanctuary, they're coming down through the nave, 
soon the final candle will be extinguished and the religious portion of this celebration will be brought to a close. His Excellency Bishop Orestes P. Charnock of Bridgeport, Connecticut, with his long mantia, is now leaving the Cathedral Church of Christ the Savior in Johnstown. As the bishop and the church dignitaries leave the cathedral, we bring our program to a close. WJAC-TV has presented highlights of the dedication of Christ the Savior Cathedral, which now serves as a spiritual headquarters for some 100,000 members of the Orthodox Greek Catholic faith in the United States. The structure is located at Garfield Street and Butler Avenue in the west end of Johnstown. Your film narrator, was the Reverend Stephen Sedor, pastor of Saints Peter and Paul's Church in Wimborough.